Jai Prabhu Pada, Jai Prabhu Pada, Prabhu Pada, Prabhu Pada,
कृष्ण पाद परम हंस परिवार जगचार कृष्ण श्रीमद भाई चरणाद ऐसे भक्त वेदांत स्वामी विष्णु प्रभुपाद की जय विष्णु पाद परम हंस परिवार जगचार कृष्ण श्रीमद भक्ति सिद्धांत सरसी ठाकुर की रामचार्य श्री हरिदास ठाकुर की अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय श्री श्री राध कृष्ण गोपीनाथ श्याम कुंड राधा कुंड गिरिराज गोवर्धन की ब्रज भूमि वृंदावन धाम की मायापुर नवद्वीप धाम की जगन्नाथ पुरी धाम की गंगा मायम मैया की वृंद देवी की सिमरन की निताय गौर ब्रह्मनंदे हरि बोल ऑल ग्लोरीस असमोदेश ऑल ग्लोरीस असमोदेश ऑल ग्लोरीस असमोदेश ऑल ग्लोरीस श्री गुरु एंड गोदाम वाल जी श्री श्री पाद
हरे कृष्ण मौसी बिहारी प्रभु कैन यू हियर मी प्रभु यस आई कैन हियर यू ओके थैंक यू yeah we'll just let some people join we yeah. already have almost 15 people on facebook okay thank you people who are watching us on facebook can also join zoom um so that you can interact at the end with uh, his grace bamsi bihari prabhu so i'll quickly go ahead and welcome his grace bamsi bihari prabhu as you all know he's a part of our uh, iskon calgary uh, community and uh mamsi bihari pro is very learned in shastra and uh he has been serving iskon calgary for many years now thank you so much pro ji for your wonderful service that you render pro ji's lectures from shrimad bhagavatam and bhagavad gita are amazing which gives us a lot of uh um you know a lot of knowledge um different viewpoint of thinking how we see things you know so hoping today also we will learn something very good out of today's session um we'll be speaking from bhagavad gita chapter 9 text 31 yes Prabhuji? that's right yeah yeah so you want to do small kirtan yeah okay. we'll do small kirtan by the mother and then we'll and then go into to join yeah. us okay okay we'll start prabhu जय राधमाधव जया कुंज विहारी
Good evening, everybody. Hare Krishna. Thanks for uh, joining us on this program in the evening on Zoom. So this is the first time I'm doing Zoom class. So if there is any mistake or if you are not able to hear me or anything, just let me know. Uh, so we'll, today we are talking about Bhagavad Gita verse, uh, chapter 9, verse 31. So we'll start with the verse. First we will do Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Shipram Bhavanti Dharmatma. Shipram Bhavanti Dharmatma. Saswat Shantim Nigachati. Kaunteya Pratijani. Kaunteya Pratijani. Name Bhakta Pranashati. Name Bhakta Pranashati. Shipram Bhavanti Dharmatma. Shipram Bhavanti Dharmatma. Saswat Shantim Naganchati. Saswat Shantim Naganchati. Kaunteya Pratijani. Kaunteya Pratijani. Name Bhakta Pranashati. Name Bhakta Pranashati. Shipram Bhavanti Dharmatma. Shipram Bhavanti Dharmatma. Saswam Santim Nagachati. Saswam Santim Nagachati. Kaunteya Pratijani. Kaunteya Pratijani. Name Bhakta Pranashati. Name Bhakta Pranashati. Shipram very soon. Shipram very soon. Bhavati. Bhavati. Becomes. Becomes. Dharmatma. Dharmatma. Righteous. Righteous. Saswat Shantim. Saswat Shantim. Lasting peace. Lasting peace. Nigachati. Nigachati. Attains. Attains. Kaunteya. Kaunteya. O son of Kunti. O son of Kunti. Pratijanihi. Pratijanihi. Declare. Declare. Na. Na. Never. Never. Me. Me. My. My. Bhakta. Bhakta. Devotee. Devotee. Pranashati. Pranashati. Perishes. Perishes. Translation. He quickly attain, becomes righteous and attains lasting peace. O son of Kunti, declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. I'll read one more time. He quickly becomes righteous and attains lasting peace. O son of Kunti, declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. Purpose by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. This should not be misunderstood. In the chapter 7, the Lord says that one who is engaged in mischievous activities cannot become a devotee of the Lord. So in the chapter 7, uh, Srila Prabhupada is referring to verse 7.15, which is 
नामाम दुष्कृतन मूढ़ा प्रपद्यंते न राधमा माया अपृता ज्ञान आसुरीम भावम अश्रिता दोस्त मिस्क्रियंस हु आर ग्रोसली पुलिश हु आर लोवेस्ट अमंग मैन काइंड whose knowledge is stolen by illusion and who partake of the atheistic nature of the demons do not surrender unto me so this is what shri prabhupada is referring to when he says in chapter 7 we'll continue with the purports one who is not a devotee of the lord has no good qualification whatsoever the question remains then how can a person engaged in abominable activities either by accident or by intention be a pure devotee this question may justly be raised the miscreants as stated in the 7th chapter who never come to the devotional service of the lord have no good qualifications as is stated in the shrimad bhagavatam generally a devotee who is engaged in the nine kinds of devotional activities is engaged in the process of cleansing all material contamination from the heart he puts the supreme personality of godhead within his heart and all sinful contaminations are naturally washed away continuous thinking of the supreme lord makes him pure by nature according to the vedas there is a certain regulation that if one falls down from his exalted position he has to undergo certain ritualistic processes to purify himself but here there is no such condition because the purifying process is already there in the heart of the devotee due to his remembering the supreme personality of god at constantly therefore the chanting of hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare should be continued without stoppage this will protect a devotee from all accidental fall downs he will thus remain perpetually free from all material contaminations ओम ज्ञानाजनाशलाखा चक्षुर्मुत तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा ददा स्वपदाति वंदेह श्रीगुर श्रीयुतापदकम श्रीगुरु वैष्णवाश्चीप सागर जात सहगना रघुनाथ सजीव साधवैत सवधूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधाकृष्ण पदा सहगुना ललिता श्री विशाखान्ता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगत्पते गोपेश गोपी कांता राधकांठा नमस्तुते तप्त कांचना गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रि वंचकल्पत्रुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभच पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्रीचैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीयद्वैत गदाधार शिवाशादी गौर्भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे so we will try to analyze uh, and try to understand better verse 9.31 but before we get into 9.31 we will just read uh, the previous two verses because these three verses they flow together so the 9.29 which is i and we no one nor am i partial to anyone i am equal to all but whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend is in me and i am also a friend to them so here krishna is talking about him being impartial to everyone in the next verse he talks about even if one commits the most abominable action if he is engaged in devotional service he is to be considered saintly because he is properly situated in his determination and 9.31 which is today's verse he says he quickly becomes righteous and attains lasting peace O son of Kunti, declare it boldly that my devotee never perishes. So, from verse twenty-nine, we see that Krishna begins by saying that he is not partial to anyone, and he is equal to all. But then he opens up with a slight exception for devotees. He says that for devotee one who is offering a devotional service to him, that person is a friend to him, and he is also friend to him, to to that person. so there is a, like a little bit of a exception to the general rule where he says he is not partial to anyone but then anybody who is offering him devotional service krishna considers that person to be his friend 
So we can say there is a slight exception in verse 29. And this slight exception opens up further in verse 30. Here he says that even if devotee is committing some abominable action, he must be considered saintly. Now by Vedic standard, abominable actions are adultery, usurping others' properties, and unnecessary killing. So these are the main key items which would be considered as something abominable. So even though a person would be committing these kind of actions, Krishna says that person should be considered saintly. So here we can sense that some antagonist, who antagonist is a person who would be opposing somebody's argument. So Krishna is presenting the argument here that even if this person is committing some abominable action, he should be considered saintly. But then some antagonist might come and challenge Krishna saying that, why would someone who is doing abominable action is to be considered saintly? And it's a valid question. If somebody is uh, you know, committing adultery or doing some kind of uh, sinful activity, why he should be considered saintly? And we will go deeper into this uh, question. But first, let's look at the next verse, 9.31. Krishna takes this exception where in th verse 30 is giving it as an exception saying, if even if my devotee is doing some abominable action, he should be considered saintly. But he takes that exception a step further and makes it a dictate. A dictate is like a, a law, right? You, you don't argue with the law. He, he makes a dictate saying that not only his devotee, despite being despite doing abominable action, should be considered saintly. But he also says that his devotee becomes righteous, attains lasting peace, and he never perishes. So, you know, there is an increasing level of uh, uh, favoritism, we can say, that Krishna is showing towards his devotee. Now the antagonist who is opposed to Krishna might probably start rejecting Krishna completely and might you know, just say that, hey, Krishna is not only partial, but he is also totally illogical. Like, how can somebody who is uh, doing abominable actions attain peace and, and uh, becomes righteous? That doesn't make sense because whatever action you do, you will accordingly, you know, uh, have reactions. So if Krishna is saying that person, in spite of doing his abominable actions, he will attain peace then there is something something wrong. Maybe it's not logical, right? That's, that's the reason we uh, like to discuss these verses. We want to understand these verses deeply, not just uh, read it once and then not think about it. We want to read it and we want to understand it. That's how Prabhupada is explaining in his purpose, right? He is putting emphasis on uh, explaining these uh, verses by, by understanding the purpose. So why, why Krishna is giving so much uh, preference to his devotee? That's, that's what we need to understand out of these three verses. Uh, is Krishna really partial or is he impartial? Because in uh, 9.29, Krishna says, I am not partial to anyone. But then 9.30 and 9.31, he is showing so much favor towards his devotee. So answer to this question is Krishna is definitely partial to his devotees, but at the same time, he is impartial to the general mass of people. How do we understand this? Srila Prabhupada used to give an analogy of a gentleman. A person who is gentle, he is gentle to all kids, all, all children in his neighborhood, in his extended family, but he would definitely take special care of his own children. So what is the difference? The difference is these, his own children have a relationship with him. And that's why he takes special care of his own children. Even though he is, in general, he is a gentleman to all children. He, he might be perfectly fine with his neighbor's children and treat them very nicely. But he takes special interest in his own children. Now, somebody might challenge and say, hey, Krishna is uh, Jagatpita. He's the father of all living entities. Then why is he showing special favor towards the devotee? Well, the key is relationship. Just like the analogy Prabhupada used to give of a gentleman, 
because he has a relationship with his own children, he would take care of his own children in a special way. Similarly, Krishna considers everybody equally. But when we try to establish some relationship with Krishna using bhakti, because of that relationship that we identify ourselves with Krishna compared to a person who is not a devotee of Krishna, he is not able to identify himself with Krishna in a special way because of that lack of relationship that the other person has with Krishna. He is not able to appreciate what Krishna is doing for him. But a devotee has a special relationship with Krishna. And we know the five types of principal relationships uh, from Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu. So if we are trying to approach Krishna as a devotee in any of those five relationships, we are considered as a devotee. And that's where the exceptions, where Krishna has given the exceptions in verse 7, 929 to 931 becomes applicable. So a devotee is a person who has started some process of devotion towards Krishna. And this devotion is nothing but a process of establishing some relationship with Krishna. Now, most antagonists are probably not willing to spend time and energy to understand these intricacies. And others may not be able to understand these things properly because there are not enough qualified teachers to help us understand these things. This is where we are very thankful to Srila Prabhupada and all the Vaishnava Acharyas who have written books to help us understand these things. So whatever I am speaking here today is just a repetition of what they have taught, what I have read in different books of Srila Prabhupada as well as other Acharyas in, in Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. So just to help you understand this verse better, uh, we will quickly talk about three types of devotees. We know there is Kanishta Adhikari, Madhyam Adhikari, and Uttam Adhikari. So a Kanishta Adhikari is someone who worships the Lord in the temple, but he does not recognize the omnipotence of the Lord. He is not able to see the omnipotence of Lord outside the temple, and he lacks proper empathy with other jivas. So that, that person is considered a Kanishta Adhikari, or a novice devotee a beginner in devotional service. <clears throat> Excuse me. Madhyama Adhikari or uh, advancing devotee sees all jivas are coming from Krishna, but is choosy in his association and conduct between devotees and non-devotees. And Uttama Adhikari is basically a person who sees all jivas as part and parcel of Krishna and does no discrimination as he sees everything in relation to Krishna. So these are the three types of devotees, and uh, I'll, I'll explain why I have defined these three uh, types of devotees. And the next thing that we know is the process of establishing relationship with Krishna is bhakti, and that's where Krishna gives the exceptions of why an abominable person or a person doing abominable activities should be considered saintly. So we need to understand what bhakti is, and what are the different steps of bhakti? So there are nine steps or stages of devotional service or bhakti, which starts with shraddha, shraddha which is having faith in the guru and the scriptures. The next is sadhu sangha, adav shraddha, sadhu sangha. Sadhu sangha is association with devotees. And the next step is bhajan kriya. So bhajan kriya is the process of actually conducting or doing devotional service. So basically hearing, chanting, remembering the nine types of devotional service that we know, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, which is uh, remembering, Shravanam is hearing, Kirtanam is chanting, Smaranam is uh, remembering, and then Archanam is worshiping Krishna, Vandanam is offering prayers to Krishna, Padasevanam is doing some uh, service toward it's, let's say service in the temple is Padasevanam. Dasyam is recognizing yourself as servant of Krishna. Sakyam is recognizing yourself as a friend of Krishna. So these are relationships. And Atmanivedanam is complete surrender. So those are the nine types of devotional service. So we were talking about nine stages of devotional service. So starting with Shraddha, Sadhusang, Bhajan Kriya. 
So bhajan kriya is the process where you are formally initiated or you take some spiritual vows and you are doing uh, your, uh, it's still unsteady bhakti, it's not steady, you are not uh, very much like completely overcome all sinful tendencies, you still have some sinful tendencies, but you are committed to the process. And this commitment is what Krishna sees. He does not see that you have some deficiencies still in your personality, but he sees that at this stage, at Bhajan Kriya stage, you are committed to Krishna and you are continuing to doing your daily vows of chanting or reading some scriptures. And the next step is Anartha Nivritti. Anartha Nivritti is the step where all these uh, bad habits or impurities are cleared. So this is the fourth step. Anartha Nivritti is the fourth step. Whereas you are established as a devotee within the first, second, and third step. So Krishna accepts you as a devotee and, uh, and you do your bit every day, day after day towards showing your commitments to Krishna. But you still have this uh, unwanted uh, attachments or impurities. And the, then the next step, Anartha Nivritti, is the step where these impurities are gone. But because you are already a devotee, Krishna is taking care of you. He is encouraging you by the verse 9.30 and 31. It's basically an encouragement. And he's giving, you, uh, uh, he's giving you assurance that by doing this bhakti, you will be able to overcome all these deficiencies. You will become righteous and you will attain peace. And finally, you will not perish. So he's, he's asking Arjuna to declare it boldly that the devotee never perishes. So he, despite of having these deficiencies, Krishna is giving you that assurance. Now somebody might say that, uh, why is Krishna doing that? So to explain that, I, I have a simple analogy and a lot of our acharyas have used that analogy too. Let's say we are using some uh, medication. Uh, let's say some antibiotics, we use it. And the doctor will give you a seven day prescription. And you know you will start seeing some improvement on the second day, but you're not 100%, you're still improving, right? So your seven day course will end on the seventh day, but by second day, you're getting better. So same way you have nine steps of devotional service. And on the first and the second step, you start getting better, but you're not completely cured yet. Similarly, when you taking the antibiotic, you are not completely cured yet. You continue with your seven day or a nine day course. Uh, would it be appropriate to discard the antibiotic on second or a third day? Because you still have uh, some, you know, whatever disease you had, you still seeing some symptoms. And, or, or would it be, can we really say that the person is not improving? Well, the answer is no, because there is some improvement. It's not completely cured, but there is some improvement. And if we stop the process on the second or the third day, then whatever progress you have made will be nullified. So Krishna, he's, he's guaranteeing you that if you continue with this process, you will see success. So he's encouraging his devotee. He's making commitments that, Please continue with this process. He's like the doctor of the soul. Krishna is the doctor of the soul. And, and the material impurities that we have is what we need to cure. Now, if some devotee is uh, making progress, but he still has some deficiencies from his previous uh, life and previous lifetimes, uh, it's not fair to just criticize him for his deficiencies. Rather, Krishna sees that he has improved 20% or 30% and he gives him encouragement. And that's why Krishna is, uh, you know, he is the God and he, he wants to see that improvement in all his devotees. He actually wants to see that improvement in all the people of this world. It's just that people who don't recognize him, they are still waiting for their opportunity to do bhakti. But Krishna is willing to give that bhakti to everybody. Uh, so we should not think that Krishna is being partial by letting some people do bhakti. No, he is, he is totally impartial. He wants everybody to do bhakti, but he does not enforce bhakti. 
he lets you choose the path of bhakti and once you are on the path of bhakti he gives you encouragement so uh, that's where krishna does not discard his devotee rather he gives them encouragement and assurance as we see in verse 30 and 31 so now we can say that we have some agreement even though i can't see you nodding your head but i i figure whoever, whoever is listening we have some agreement that bhakti is a process and krishna is absolutely correct in saying that a person who is on path of bhakti is properly situated but the next question would be should he be considered saintly when who is when he is doing devotion or should he be admonished or criticized when he does any sinful or abominable activity like we discussed earlier if he does any of those bad activities is it okay to criticize him because he has done something bad or should we consider him saintly all the time so krishna says no he must be considered saintly at all times and must not be criticized at all so earlier we defined uttam adhikari as someone who sees everyone in relation to krishna so now you can imagine krishna is the supreme person how much greater krishna is krishna sees only the good in all the devotees and assures that by his devotion devotees become righteous and peaceful so devotee in his uh, anartha nivritti or the fourth stage of bhakti realizes his shortcomings so it's not like uh, he continues with his abominable actions and does not care about it he he actually realizes that these are my deficiencies and uh, due to his uh, previous nature sometimes he is he fails to maintain his rightful position and sometimes he fails and does all these activities but then because he realizes bhakti and his relationship to krishna he is constantly repenting he is is constantly uh, asking krishna for forgiveness for the for the bad activities that he might uh, mistakenly do and krishna he encourages him encourages him how he will give him more devotee association so he can realize his mistakes and try to you know you the you are known by the company you keep or you uh tend to uh do activities depending on the type of association you have so the more devotee association you will have there is a greater tendency that you will commit less sinful activity or you will not fall back into your old materialistic ways so krishna encourages the devotee and you know he gives him devotee association and uh, gives him a guru and all these things uh, like literature bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam uh, krishna has done all these things for the devotees he has already done it for everybody but it's the devotee who recognizes that these things are important in life and others they don't uh, regard much when we talk to them about uh, the scriptures but krishna has given these scriptures krishna has given uh, a guru krishna has given you devotee association so you can constantly improve and uh, get rid of all these uh, bad habits that we have accumulated since time immemorial so the devotee is making his effort and is completely devotee devoted to krishna finally at some point he will get rid of all unwanted qualities and he will progress to higher levels of bhakti so the higher levels of bhakti like i was talking earlier about the nine uh, nine stages so anartha nivritti is when you give up all different uh, unwanted qualities and then you progress into nishtha which is you become very steady in your uh, in your devotional practices you don't commit any more sinful activities and slowly you will develop ruchi which is taste for krishna and then asakti which is attachment for krishna and then you will progress to bhava and a prema which is pure love for krishna so the next question uh, some antagonist or who is willing to challenge would ask us 
what would happen if the devotee is not able to overcome his unwanted qualities and dies prematurely? Would he suffer for his sinful reactions because he was doing some abominable activities? Would he suffer because of his uh, bad conduct? And would he fail? And that's why Krishna says no. Again, he says no. Krishna says that, Arjuna, you must boldly declare to all these antagonists that his devotee, Krishna's devotee, never perishes. So he has made a similar statement in chapter 6, where he says that one who is doing good is never overcome by evil. And a person who is on a spiritual path, he will take birth in a uh, in a transcendental family. So people who are doing in a family where there is some path of uh, yoga or uh, devotional service, or he will, born, he will be born in a rich family where he will get an opportunity to continue on his onward journey in bhakti. So similarly, Krishna gives assurance over here as well that his devotee never perishes, means his devotee, even if he does not overcome all his bad qualities in this lifetime, he will be able to continue on the path of bhakti. He will not perish. And that's, that's what Krishna means in this verse 9.31 when he says that, declare it boldly, my devotee never perishes. So we can see bhakti is all auspicious. Once you get on the path of bhakti to Krishna, he is assured of success as Krishna takes personal interest in such devotee. And he feels obliged to do so. Why is Krishna feeling obliged to take personal interest in a devotee or, or a person who is doing bhakti? So it's mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, sixth canto, second chapter, verse 10. There is a verse that says, the chanting of, my ho the, of the holy name of Lord Vishnu is the best process of atonement. And simply by chanting the holy name of Lord Vishnu, such sinful person may attract the attention of the Supreme Lord who therefore considers, because this man has chanted my holy name, it's my duty to give him protection. So Krishna, because you are chanting his name, even, even though you are not chanting it perfectly yet, because just because you are chanting his name, he is obliged to give you protection. That's how Krishna thinks. So these scriptures are there to help us understand the personality of Krishna. The Gita, the Srimad Bhagavatam, they in Gita, Krishna himself says what he thinks. And in Srimad Bhagavatam, all different devotees are telling us about what Krishna's personality is. So some everybody in the world wants to know God, wants to see God, and you know, wants to challenge God. But they don't know the source of knowledge. The source of knowledge is in the scripture. So imagine if somebody is constantly calling you at your door calling your name at your door, obviously you'll be obliged to go open the door and see what's wrong, right? Same way it's Krishna's personality. If you are constantly chanting his name, Krishna will be obliged to open the door and understand why you are chanting his name and give you protection. So why does Krishna ask Arjuna to declare boldly. Why, why doesn't Krishna declare it himself would be the next question. Why does Krishna does not declare it himself that the devotee will never perish? So the answer to this question is Krishna is Bhaktavatsala and puts words of his devotees at a higher value than his own words. Under all circumstances, Krishna keeps his devotees' promises even though he might break his own words at times. Uh, uh, one instance is at, in, during the war of uh, Mahabharata. The, the event has not happened yet when Krishna spoke Gita to Arjuna, but Krishna, being the, being the God, he knows what's going to happen in future, and he knows everything that has happened in the past. That's, the, what, that's what he says in fourth chapter in Bhagavad Gita. So Krishna already knew that he's going to break his own vow in this war, why? Because he promised that he's not going to pick any weapon in the war. But Bhishma took a vow at the same time that he's going to make Krishna use a weapon in the war. And uh, the, the, the war was very fierce. At, at, at one point, Krishna lifted a chariot wheel in Kurukshetra. 
to motivate Arjuna to fight more forcefully and also to keep Bhishma's vow. So you can see from actual life instances from Krishna's leelas that Krishna is willing to bend himself backwards to protect the vow of his devotee. And he is even willing to let go of his own vow. And that's why over here, he asks Arjuna to declare it boldly that the devotee never perishes instead of giving the vow himself. So he did not want anyone to have any doubts about when it comes to what will happen to a devotee if he dies without complete success in bhakti. And that's why he asked Arjuna to declare it. So another key thing to learn from these verses is Krishna is commanding everyone to consider his devotee saintly, even if the devotee shows bad behavior. So Krishna doesn't like any criticism of his devotees. And in bhakti, such criticism is known as Vaishnava Aparada. So we must avoid any back talking, any maligning of any person who is dedicated to Krishna. Even in general, such acts are not desirable. But especially in the association of devotees, we should not engage in any back talking or any you know, criticism. So there is a famous uh, story in Srimad Bhagavatam where Durvasamani was maligning Maharaj Ambrish. And Vishnu or Krishna sent the Sudarshan Chakra to punish Durvasa. And Durvasa ran all over the universe for protection. He went to Brahma, Shiva, all the demigods. Nobody was able to protect him from the Sudarshan Chakra. Finally, he went back to Vishnu to protect himself from Sudarshana. And even Vishnu said, I am not able to help you. You have to go back to Maharaj Ambrish, who you have offended, and ask for forgiveness from him. Only by doing such a deed would you be able to protect yourself from Sudarshan Chakra. So we can see how, uh, how uh, forceful or how bad it is for us to, to do criticism uh, against a devotee. It is said that if you do offenses against holy name, so there are 10 offenses against holy names, we won't go into those details, but if you do any of those 10 offenses against the holy name, those offenses can be washed off by constantly chanting the holy names. But if we do offenses against Vaishnavas, uh, even the holy name won't protect you. It's only by going and apologizing or surrendering to that Vaishnava and offering him some service and you know, coming to good terms with him and asking for forgiveness, only then can we overcome such offenses against Vaishnavas. So we have to be very careful in our uh, spiritual uh, life against doing any Vaishnava Prada. So, so we can see how bhakti uh, is, is the essence here. Um, in spite of having bad qualities, if you're doing bhakti, Krishna is assuring you success. He's saying that you will attain uh, righteousness, peacefulness, and finally you will you know, succeed in your goal of spiritual life. So bhakti is the essence and remembering Krishna all the time is the key to clearing this material contamination, purifying our existence in the world and reaching the supreme destination. But many will question, how do we continue such single focused bhakti? What we say it's ananya bhakti, given our current material condition. All of us are in the same boat. All of us are in this material world and there is constant uh, uh, trouble. Adi Devik, Adi Bhautik, Adhyatmik. So right now we are going through a pandemic, which is, uh, you know, Adi Bhautik uh, problems we are facing, right? So we are constantly troubled by different sources. So how can we continue doing such devoted bhakti so the question is valid. And, you know, Krishna doesn't just give you a commandment that do bhakti to me. Krishna understands that you are in this material world and, uh, you know, it will be, it will take you some time before you can do uh, single pointed bhakti. So Krishna in 12th chapter of Bhagavad Gita uh, verses 9 and 10, Krishna says, my dear Arjuna, O winner of wealth, 
if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation, then follow the regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga. In this way, develop a desire to attain me. Right? And if you are not able to follow the regulations of Bhakti Yoga, so the regulations of Bhakti Yoga is, we know the four uh, principles that we do, which is uh, no meat eating, no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex life. And what are the other regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga? We do, you know, 16 rounds minimum of chanting, and we do some temple worship, things like that. We do worship at home. But if somebody is not able to do that, then what is the option? So Krishna says, if you cannot practice the regulations of Bhakti Yoga, then try to work for me. Because by working for me, you will come to the perfect stage. So what is this work Krishna is referring to? So wh why we are trying to understand this point is, uh, not everybody is in, on the same position or on the same uh, graph on reaching the perfection of bhakti. And people will ask this question or somebody might say, oh, this is not practical. I can't really do one and a half hour or two hour of chanting a day. What, what, is, what else I can do? And Krishna gives you the solution. He says, then just try to work for me if you're not able to do bhakti properly because by doing work for me, you will come to the perfect stage. And what is that perfect stage? you will be able to do bhakti. So at some point, you know, even, even myself, uh, at some point we were just trying to work for Krishna and eventually by the mercy of Guru and Krishna, we are able to practice bhakti. So what is this work that Krishna is referring to? After all, you know, Krishna says in uh, fourth chapter um, or earlier even in the third chapter, Krishna says there is no work that he needs to do, but he still works. And in fourth chapter in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says what his work is. Work, he says, it's paritrayanai sadhunam vinashchayatshya dushkritam dharam samstapnarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge. So that is Krishna's work. Krishna comes to deliver the pious, to annihilate the miscreants, as well as to reestablish the principles of religion. I myself appear millennium after millennium. So that is Krishna's work. Now, if we can work for Krishna, so Krishna has defined what his work is. And if we can help him in achieving his goal, then we are actually working for Krishna. So ISKCON works on these principles and it's giving you an opportunity or giving everyone an opportunity to become pious. And that's what Krishna wants. Krishna wants to protect the pious. So ISKCON is giving everybody an opportunity to become pious by following the principles of Bhakti Yoga. Now, again, Krishna wants to annihilate the miscreants. But in Kali Yuga, because of uh, the extreme mercy of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, uh, the agenda in Kali Yuga is not to annihilate the miscreants, but to annihilate the miscreants' tendencies. So the bad habits that we have, we have to eliminate that. So Krishna, again, Iskan is helping uh, to, to transform the miscreants. Right? And the next work of Krishna is to dharam samstha apnartha. So establish the religious principles. Again, Iskan is helping establish these religious principles in the society. And what is the religious principle for the current ages? Uh, Harinam Sankirtan. So by doing this, Iskan is helping Krishna in his mission. So if we help Iskan, we are directly working for Krishna. That's what Krishna says in 12th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. That if you're not able to follow all the principles of bhakti yoga, then try to work for me. And, and then I described you what is Krishna's work and how Iskon is doing the same work that Krishna has stepped out to do. And if we are working for Iskon, we are directly working for Krishna. So Iskon's single biggest contribution is presenting Vedic literature without any adulteration, without any misinterpretation. So uh, basically, the books written by Srila Prabhupada, that, that these, those are the basis of ISKCON. So without, without books, there is no ISKCON. And uh, coming back, back to the point, this, this month is we are celebrating Gita Jayanti on December 25th. And currently, we are doing books marathon. Basically, we are distributing as many books as we can throughout the world. So our, our target for this uh, year is to distribute about 2 million Bhagavad Gitas all over the globe. And basically, that is what 
uh, we are doing as a work working for krishna you know so we are helping krishna in his mission so by working on distributing these geetas we are directly working for krishna and this will purify our consciousness we will be able to do bhakti better those are the principles that krishna has uh, detailed on how you can practice bhakti if you can follow all the regulative principles great if you can not able to do 100% then krishna says work for me because by working for me you will come to the perfect stage and what is that perfect stage again i said earlier it's the ability to do bhakti right and earlier when we started chanting even four rounds of chanting was really tough now you know slowly slowly by by mercy of krishna and guru and uh, constant association of devotees and inculcating some uh, uh, principles in your uh, family life at your home you are able to do bhakti you are able to chant the holy name and by chanting the holy name krishna is obliged krishna is obliged to give you all protection so by this chanting of hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare we will be able to attract krishna's attention towards us and by doing that we will be able to make our life successful so thank you very much for uh, joining us today and uh, I'll, i'll be willing to take any questions if there are any questions so far there is no questions let's see if somebody asks them on facebook anyone on zoom having any questions please you can go ahead Raja Ram Das Roy says very nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you Prabhu. So I would uh, I would ask a question to myself. If there is no no question I'll ask a question to myself. I know I said uh, in 6th chapter uh, Krishna says that a devotee uh, will continue on the spiritual life. In 2nd chapter Krishna says <laughs> everybody is a soul. So I would uh, I would ask a question to myself. there is no no question i'll ask you mm-hmm. i know that uh, in 6th chapter uh, yeah i have muted him sorry in 2nd chapter you mute yourself if you if you have a question please go ahead otherwise just yeah yes roji um mamsi bihari pro you are muted Okay. yeah i am muted now yeah okay yeah in second chapter krishna says that uh, all the souls all the souls are uh, basically all living beings are souls and nobody dies you just change the body and then over here krishna says the devotee never perishes so somebody might say even a non devotee who is a soul will not perish right and over here krishna is saying in this 9.31 krishna is saying that a devotee will never perish so what how do we choose is it second chapter where krishna says all living beings are soul and soul never perishes so how we understand this verse is uh, when krishna says that a devotee never perishes he is referring to your devotional life that you are doing in this lifetime will never perish whatever you have uh, Uh, progress you have made as a devotee in this lifetime you will continue on that path just like he says in the 6th chapter a uh, uh, transcendentalist or a yogi never never goes back words in his spiritual life so this that's what krishna is referring to when he says the devotee never perishes so whatever devotional progress you have made in this life you will carry on with that in your next lifetime and that's 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 what i wanted to just clarify Okay. So is it okay? Should we? Ah, uh, Mata Ji, you wanna come on the video and ask a question, or we should? So, um, uh, I wanted to ask, um, uh, as a as a devotee, um, should we be associating with that devotee who has? Hey, Prabhu, I have a life? question. Mata Ji, you wanna come on the video and ask a question, or we should? Need to need to. 
just after this so, question, uh, we will take your question uh, to me. Okay, okay. Prabhu, I have a question. No, no, wait, somebody's talking. You have to mute your uh, uh, re reduce your sound on Facebook, Prabhuji. There is a delay. Okay. No, 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 not Bamsi Bihari Pro. Mintu Bos Pro has to. Um, he's watching on Facebook as well on the side. Okay. That. Okay. Prabhuji, unmute and ask your question. Prabhuji, on your Zoom call, on this side, Prabhuji. Prabhuji, the one that's in front of you. I've asked you to unmute. Just click on unmute. This side, yes. Ask okay. Your... Um, uh, Prabhuji, I have a question. Uh, the, and the question. Okay, I'm on Zoom. Yes. I have asked you to unmute. Just click on unmute. Okay, I'm on unmute on on Zoom. Okay. I have a question. And the question. Stop your Facebook, Prabhuji. Don't watch it on okay, Facebook. I'm on Zoom. Yes. Okay, I'm on, I'm on Zoom. Okay. Um, you do have a question. Uh, question. Stop your Facebook on the side. Don't watch it on Facebook. Then off the Facebook. Okay, we, we just uh, close the Facebook down. <laughs> you know, one person was talking, you shouldn't destroy. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Go ahead, Prabhu. Now. Um, okay. Um, is that okay now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. So, we, the, my question is, uh, you know, if we can't do the sixteen rounds, you said uh, that's not a that's not a fault. So, what kind of work uh, do you have to do to make up for the rounds initially? Yeah, so uh, like I was describing, uh, you know, not everybody is able to follow all the rules in the beginning. And Krishna says that if you can't hear, oh, you can't hear me because uh, I think your volume on your I, phone. I think you are unmuted. Uh, increase your volume, Prabhuji. On your phone. Vol volume is still the same. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay. I think there is some lag. So, uh, like Krishna says, you, if, if you are not able to follow all the regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga, you can work for me. And like we said earlier, uh, you know, this month it's uh, Gita Jayanti. And if we work on distributing books for Krishna, that, that's a service. Yeah, we do can do service in the temple. We can do service in, uh, you know, uh, doing this book service. We can... Whatever service opportunity is there in ISKCON program, you know, our temples open from morning five o'clock to noon, and then again from four till eight. So there is a lot of service opportunity in the temple. So if we can do service in the temple, we can do service by helping in distributing books. We can participate in Harina during summer times. We have a lot of events that we go outside and do Harina. So all these all these things will actually help you. <clears throat> make that progress and slowly you know uh, you you start with four rounds if that's what you are comfortable with and slowly you make progress uh, but one thing that there is a verse in Srimad Bhagavatam when even other acharyas they said once you make progress don't take a step forward step backwards so if you are doing four rounds don't say okay I'll start doing two rounds now you should always try to increase your numerical strength and if you're doing four, that's great. Any any type of commitment you do to Krishna is uh, is your permanent asset. Even if it's four round, it's it's good. Better it's better than one round. But slowly, slowly, we should try to increase. It might take few years. That's fine. 
and depending everybody's lifestyle is different uh, it take if it takes a little while that's okay as long as you are making that progress if you show that intention right and you know slowly we we work on doing the regulative principles of bhakti yoga the four regulative principles you know association with devotees is the key because uh, like i said earlier if you associate with devotees uh, you will get influenced by their personality and uh, you will try to uh, do activities which are in the devotional path so i see there is another question here that sarva mangla just texted saying so a yeah. devotee should should we still be associating with people who are doing uh, abominable act so uh, it, it's a tricky question uh, you know a lo- lot of uh, like the six uh, uh, updesh amrita it said uh, you, you should not associate with non devotees now if if there is a devotee who is uh, by mistake has done some bad activity should be associate with him i i would say yes we should associate because by our association if we are able to influence him to make the progress right if some devotee has uh, missed something and you know did some activity which was not uh, according to bhakti principles we should not abandon the devotee that would be the last thing uh, that prabhupad would encourage us to do there is a lot of instances uh, in prabhupad lila amrit and other uh, other uh, devotee memories uh, where they are talking about where prabhupad actually went out of his way to make sure uh, some devotee who has fallen down does not leave his con he wanted that uh, that person should still be in his con because his chances of success is higher if he stays in his con even if he has committed some bad act uh, you know, there was some devotees initially in 70s who were smoking and you know prabhupad said okay i will forgive you if you smoked i will forgive you but next time don't smoke he didn't say that okay i'm going to kick you out of the temple and you are not allowed to come to the temple because you were smoking no he didn't say that he said okay that's okay you did it and you admit your mistake uh, we will we will give you an opportunity to improve right now if you can't keep doing the mistakes over, over and over and expect that every time you will be forgiven but the guru is very merciful you know he will even if he reprimands you or if he gets punishes you even that is for your good so even if some devotee has done some mistake i think we should still associate with them and uh, you know we should try to influence him uh, with with our ideal behavior if we are able to influence him in the right way and try to uh, get them to uh, agree that next time you know he will be be very careful in his act so i would say yeah even if some devotee has failed we should stick with him uh, we should uh, try to encourage him and uh, slowly we will be able to you know help him out and he will make progress as well and on the other hand uh, uh, if somebody who is a non devotee uh, and doing abominable activities should we associate with them now for a beginner the recommendation is we should not associate with people who are uh, doing bad acts or or bad activities because we are new in our path of bhakti we are not very strong or very stable in our bhakti our bhakti is unsteady and in this unsteady bhakti if we associate with people who are you know not doing great things they will influence us in a bad way so when we are new we should not associate with them but as our bhakti gets more steady then you know prabhupad went to bavari which was the worst place in the whole of us and uh, he influenced them in a positive way to accept bhakti if prabhupad had said that oh bavari is not the right place to go i don't think i, I can go there then <laughs> there there would be no iskon so uh, we should we should uh, reach out to people uh, and uh, but we should be very strong in our own practice if we are very strong in our practice and we reach out to people then we will be able to influence them in the right way and uh, we won't be getting influenced by them but in our initial stages of bhakti uh, we should try to cultivate our own bhakti uh, nicely that's that's what i would say 
Very nicely said, bro. Very nicely explained. Thank you. Kalini Mataji has something to say. Prabhu, I just want to say that you spoke so well. I had so many small, small questions that you answered me right away, you know. And I really, okay. I really, I enjoyed this lecture so much and I pray you do more so for us. Okay. Thanks for giving me an opportunity and uh, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah. Hare Krishna, everyone. Ki Jai. Yeah. So, uh, some quick announcements. Um, I don't see any questions from Facebook. So, I guess we will call it uh, the evening now. Um, before we go, at the end, we will thank Bamsi Bihari Prabhu by chanting along everyone on Zoom, whoever are present. We'll unmute ourselves and uh, chant Mahamantra all together for Bamsi Bihari Prabhu's better health in the future. and. He becomes more stronger and stronger so that he can keep serving his con Calgary Shishri Radha Madhav the way he has been doing. He is a very good book distributor also. Um, the goal that they did get the book distribution department, they got the goal. I think they're doing way, way better this time. So all um, it's Thanks. all the credit goes to Bamsi Bihari Prabhu and Anuttama Prabhu. Um, uh, quick announcements on the Christmas day, the Friday, the 25th, um, you know, as Bamsi Bihar Prabhu said that we can serve in so many ways. We can serve by taking prasad, we can serve by having just darshan, we can serve by singing for Bhagwan, we can serve by, um, you know, reciting. So here everyone is going to get an opportunity to recite shlokas from Bhagavad Gita on the 25th. We'll be starting from 10.30. The schedule has been sent out. Um, if you still have any questions and concern, you can still go ahead and talk to Raja Ramdas Prabhu, Raj Kumar Prabhuji. And we are looking forward for all your association. This is the way you can serve by reciting the shlokas. We'll be reading the translation after every shloka. So the schedule has been already made, which has been distributed on WhatsApp and through emails who are in contact with Raja Ram Das Prabhu. So this will go till 6 o'clock in the evening from 10 o'clock, 10.30 in the morning till 6 o'clock in the evening. 6 o'clock we'll have Sandhya Aarti. And then after very exciting uh, personality of ISKCON is very well known as uh, ISKCON's YouTube star. Um, His Grace Amoglila Prabhu will be joining us. So I really, really, really ask everyone to ask your friends also to come and join us on that day, especially on Zoom. Keep your videos on. And you know, Amoglila Pro is very good with answering any of your questions. So don't just miss this opportunity. Amoglila Pro is is very busy devotee. He's, he's preaching, he's giving like seven to ten classes in a day. He's a very busy person. He's a Brahmachari, he's a Vice Temple President of Iskon Dwarika in Delhi. And uh, he is also um, a professor. He has been preaching in many places to students. He's an amazing youth preacher. So let's all take this opportunity on the 25th, a Christmas day. It's a New Year's for Christmas Christian people. But let us celebrate this with Krishna, you know, let, let's become Krishnas on that day. And uh, I hope that you really, really enjoy that day, the session with Amoglila Prabhu. So please pass this message to everyone. Um, email has been sent out. WhatsApp reminders have been and Facebook also notifications. Please share it on your profile. And uh, next day, we will have six hour Kirtan. So that is the Saturday 26th. Um, same timings, same session, but instead of meet, We'll be doing it on Zoom, so keep a note of that. The links will be shared soon, and uh, we'll keep you updated. So thank you all. Now I will ask everyone to unmute themselves and uh, loudly chant Hare Krishna Mahamantra. You will see a pop-up to unmute your um, phones. So we'll all go ahead and say Hare Krishna Mahamantra all together. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Rama.
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Haribo, Haribo. 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 Haribo.